I presented the results of a systematic review that I did and that was published in the Journal of Geriatric Oncology earlier this year, um, where we uh, had the results of 36 publications on um, the effects of a geriatric evaluation on treatment, treatment decisions and outcome. Um, and uh, I think we've known for quite a while that um, there's been uh, uh, lots of data that shows that if you do a geriatric assessment, um, clinicians tend to change their treatment plan or the multidisciplinary team changes their treatment plan. Um, and also that a lot of non-oncologic interventions are implemented or at least recommended. Um, uh, the uptake is, is quite varying of these recommendations. Um, but what we wanted to show with this um, paper is the data that's now available of the actual effect on treatment outcome. Um, so one of the studies, um, quite well known, I think, within the geriatric community, it was published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology by Romain Kaur in 2016, and um, it, show, it was a randomized study where uh, the one arm, arm had standard care and the other arm had geriatric assessment-based treatment allocation, which showed that there was less under and over treatment um, less toxicity, um, a better completion rate, and uh, without compromising the oncologic outcomes. So I think that's the only study we know where geriatric evaluation is actually used to guide treatment decisions. And then the other studies that we found um, basically use geriatric interventions to improve treatment outcomes. Um, uh, and these have shown that at least there is an effect um, on treatment completion. Um, and also on treatment-related complications, um, but there is still limited data on uh, effect on survival um, or uh, quality of life or healthcare utilization. Well, I think one of the issues is, I, I, yes, um, I agree. Um, if we have the resources, we should do an assessment, but I think if we don't look at the actual um, outcomes um, uh, in the, in, for the patient. So it, if we show that a geriatric assessment results in a change of treatment, that's interesting, but it only shows me that the doctor has taken note of the results of the geriatric assessment. But if we don't assess actual benefits, then we don't know if perhaps um, we get frightened by the results of the assessment and we are under-treating patients. Um, so I think um, it's really important, and it was one of the things I also said in my talk this morning, was that it's really important that um, if we're doing these kinds of studies, we need to look at actual outcomes and actual benefit, and not um, what I would call process indicators, which just show us that something's changed in the process, but we need to see if it actually changes the outcome. Um, yes, I think so. Um, I didn't go into the details of studies, but when I looked at clinicaltrials.gov, I found 15 ongoing studies which in their title had geriatric assessment, um, including outcome and management. So I think um, in the next few years we can expect more data on this. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, there was a very interesting discussion uh, yesterday in one of the sessions about how do we implement the geriatric assessment. Um, and there was a, um, you can see it ranges from nothing at all to a very simple screening to a geriatric assessment that is limited to a few geriatric domains to a full comprehensive geriatric assessment which incorporates also management and follow-up and multidisciplinarity. Um, and I think um, it varies with how motivated the team is, the resources that are available um, in, in practical sense of time, um, money, um, but also you, if you want to do a geriatric consultation, you'll need a geriatrician. Um, and it was also shown in one of the talks yesterday that, for example, in the United States, um, I think they have about a tenth of the uh, geriatricians that they expect to need within the next few years with the aging of society. So. Um, I think it really depends on, on what's possible, on how you can implement this. No, I, I think we've shown the effects. Um, I think the discussion is, is, uh, is really now in fine-tuning um, how, how, how do we optimally um, uh, implement it, what's, what's the, the, um, the best way to, I mean, there will always be limited resources, so what is the best way to use these resources? Where should we place them? Um, but I don't think there is any debate, especially not here, um, that there is value in doing some form of geriatric screening or assessment.